I woke up at 4.14 in the morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. Bless your Lord. Touch him, Jesus. And I never went back to sleep. It was, that was all right. But anyway, um, you know what? I, I've not been able to shake that thing of the 4.14. And I know that all of us wake up. Sometimes we see what time it is. But I, I, I've carried that around in my spirit ever since last Sunday. And yesterday I felt like the Lord was speaking to me and he said there's a correlation a correlation between that 414 that you saw last Sunday and next Sunday. And so anyway, um, this is what I think. I, I, I just, you know, and I was thinking, okay, it's the number nine if you add it all together. And I was thinking, okay, but, you know, it's like, okay, number one stands for God. Number eight stands for new beginnings. You know, we all kind of know that, that kind of thing. And, and I, I knew that, but I couldn't get, I couldn't, that wasn't satisfying to me. It wasn't like the whole picture. I couldn't, you know, it wasn't coming together. And so anyway, I was standing down here and I felt like the Lord said, I want you to look up Yom Kippur. And as you know, we are in, the Jewish people are in Rosh Hashanah right now. But Yom Kippur, it starts today. And think about it, today is the 27th. There's a num another number nine. So there's a, correlat a correlation between last Sunday and this Sunday. Now Rosh, uh, day, the Yom Kippur, it starts today at sundown and then it ends tomorrow night on monday night but do you do you know what yom kippur stands for it is the day of atonement and it's the central theme the central theme of that is repentance and atonement we're hearing all about yesterday as i watched the return i watched it for 12 sol solid hours and it was you know what it was all about the return but the return you know what god can forgive but it's no good without our repentance if we do not acknowledge that we have sin or that we have something that needs to be fixed then we can cry out god forgive 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 but you know what he wants us to repent Come on, you're kind of looking yeah, at me like on. I'm it's crazy, good. but I'm it's not good. crazy. It's good. Keep going. And you know what? And it, it talks about the Jews. Now listen to what they do. You know what? Sometimes we as Christians, I think that we're so, like, uh, we're, we're sissies. <laughs> yeah. Easy peasy. We want it just always to flow easy and to be nice and to, you know, and, and uh, oh dear, you know, I, oh dear, I can take off on some things. Lord, help me, please. But you know what? Sometimes, and I am going to say this because the Lord's really put it in my heart. But we feel like we've become Christians and we are entitled to the grace of God. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. This is not an entitlement society. We are the people of God with responsibilities for the kingdom of God. The Jews traditionally observe this holy day with a 24-hour period of fasting and intensive prayer, often spending most of the day in synagogue services. And it is known as the High Holy Day, the Days of Awe. And that starts tonight at sundown. I think God has got a central theme. Go there was so much yesterday tied together between Judaism and Christianity. But you know what? We have been grafted in. We didn't, you know, the Jews came first, folks. And we were grafted in because of the grace of God. Yes. But I believe, you know what? If <laughs> you think about it. Some of them, they don't even know the Lord Jesus Christ, but they will spend 25 hours fasting and in prayer and their family gathered around and seeking God. We a lot of times act like we can't give up one meal. 
Or if we do, we got to supplement it with a little something to get us by for the day. Is that not true? Day of Atonement. It is the holiest day of the year for the Jews. How about for us? I just believe that God is so desirous. He's so desirous for us to become the people he wants us to become. He wants to come back for a spot, a church without spot or wrinkle, for a holy people. That he is so, he's like, you know what, how you, you get desperate for something. You get desperate for things. But you know what, do we ever think of how desperate God gets for you and I to pay attention to him? Come on, do you? That's a question. Do you ever think that God gets desperate for us to pay attention to him? I believe it. I believe it. Yes. Thank you. Lord. And I believe that we are at that point. It's the yesterday was all called the return prayer on the on the you know at the Capitol in Washington D.C. I'm telling you, my heart just fluttered when I would see the monument and I would see the white the Capitol building and all those. There was probably two hundred, three hundred thousand people there. I don't know if it ever made the news. I looked on everything I could find, and I never saw it on Fox, never saw it on CNN, never saw it anywhere. But you know what? If they've got a hundred protesters, then they show all of them in their filthiness. And when the people of God, you know what? This is the thing that God, we have got to, oh, we've got to become what God wants us to be. And that's going to take getting rid of us. So at sundown tonight, you know what? Maybe I'm putting the thing out there. Maybe it's time for a fast in this house. Maybe it starts at sundown tonight and it goes through nightfall tomorrow. But you know what? And I'm not going to force you. That's between you and God. I'm just putting it out there. But oh, what does God want from us? He wants to move so mightily. And we must not be the ones to hold him back. We must be the ones to help him to be able to move forward across our nation because there's a lot of things at stake. Yom Kippur. Day of atonement. Day of atonement and repentance.